Hey guys, welcome to Skill Links. Light travels at the speed of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. This information is nothing new to you. Now imagine using this speed to transfer information from one place to another. Well, if the idea of this sounds a little impossible, then let me break this news to you. We have been using light as a communication media since the 1950s. This proposition was first given by Alexander Graham Bell in his invention of the photophone. In his experiment, he focused sunlight with a mirror that reflected towards the receiving end. He then spoke into a device with a selenium crystal attached to the opposite side of the reflecting mirror. The sound waves made the mirror vibrate. At the receiving end, these vibrations were picked and decoded in the same way an electrical signal is decoded. Using this mechanism, information could be sent to a few hundred meters. However, several factors such as the weather had a high probability of interfering with this means of communication. This was a major drawback of this invention and because of this, Bell could not perform any further development on the photophone. Now this was back in 1880s. Since then, scientists have come up with various ways to implement this idea into actual use. The latest and most widely followed method of transferring data over long distances was given by Narendra Singh Kapani in 1952 using fiber optic cables. The fiber optic cable is carefully designed with two different materials over one another. The inner material is called core and covering the core is an outer layer called the cladding. Let's understand how information is sent through this cable. To do this, we will observe a ray of light that enters from one medium to another. At the point where the ray strikes the surface, an imaginary perpendicular line is drawn at it. This line is called the normal. Here we will observe that the ray that passes through the surface has bent towards the normal. Now when this ray of light further passes from water to air, then this time we will observe that the ray of light has bent away from the normal. From this, we understand that a ray traveling from a rarer medium, in this case air, will bend towards the normal, while a ray traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium will bend away from the normal. If the ray of light strikes the medium it is traveling to in such a manner that the ray is refracted at an angle of 90 degree, then the incident angle is called critical angle. If the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, then the ray is reflected back into the medium. This concept is used in fiber optic cables. The incident light ray is positioned in such a way that the angle is greater than 90 degree. This makes the light wave reflect back into the material of the core until it finally reaches the destination. Using this principle of total internal reflection, information is made to travel in the fiber optic cable. Now, there might be a scenario in which a ray enters the core at an angle less than the critical angle. In such a case, Instead of the ray getting reflected, it gets refracted. This results in loss of signal which is not favored. In order for this to be avoided, the signal is made to enter the optical glass fiber at an angle called the acceptance angle. The acceptance angle is the angle at which the ray should enter the optical fiber so that it undergoes total internal reflection. Now let's consider a ray that is incident at an angle I at the core. This ray gets refracted from the core surface and makes an angle theta. The ray is then incident on the core cladding surface at an angle theta c. This angle theta c is given by theta c equals theta minus 90. We just learned that the angle of refraction at the core cladding interface should be greater than 90 degree for total internal reflection to take place. So we will consider that the ray is refracted at an angle of 90 degree. Now according to Snell's law, the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is a constant. If we consider n1 to be the refractive index of the core and n2 to be the refractive index of the cladding, then on applying Snell's law, we get n1 sine theta c equals n2 sine 90, which implies that sine theta c equals n2 by n1. Thus, for a ray to be reflected back into the core, the ray should be incident at an angle greater than theta c. The maximum angle at which this occurs is called the maximum angle of acceptance. The sign of this angle is termed as a numerical aperture and is given by Na equals No sin i equals N1 sin theta, where No is the refractive index of air. Taking Na equals N1 sin 90 minus theta t. We know that sine of 90 minus theta c is equal to cos theta c. 
and cos theta c can be given as root of 1 minus sin square theta c. We just derived that sin theta c equals n2 by n1, right? So on substituting, we get n a equals n1 root of 1 minus n2 square by n1 square. After making the necessary rearrangements, we get n a equals root of n1 square minus n2 square. The higher the value of n a, the more light is propagated. The numerical aperture is used to determine how much light can be propagated through the fiber optic cable. This is how information is made to travel through an optical fiber by determining the correct angle. Did you know that an optical fiber can be made to carry more than one information at the same time? To know more about this, you'll have to watch our next video on fiber optics. Until then, bye!